effective. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, I just want to wrap up the Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Uh, by complimenting an excellent uh, set of speeches from the Treasury benches tonight. I mean, we've got an excellent health team, a great set of very committed people across the health committee, actually on both sides of the House. Uh, and certainly the Chair of the Health Committee is doing a great job in support of the uh, Government's agenda, uh, working with his team of very able and committed National Party MPs. We had a set of really deeply anaesthetising speeches from the Opposition tonight. Um, I mean, poor old Kevin, Kevin Haig, yeah, I mean, he was like uh, the personification of uh, Tamazepam. But um, what was really disappointing about that set of speeches was that there was really no policy no policy there. The only bit of policy we got was from um, uh, the MP for Manukau East, who committed the Labor government to an instant $4 billion fiscal blowout at their first budget by saying they're going to tip in another $1.7 billion uh, straight into the health budget. And then on top of that, you're talking probably another almost $2.3 in their first year. So the problem with Labor in their approach to health is they just don't see it as part of a wider fiscal context. There's no emphasis on accountability, no emphasis on results. I mean, Sam Lotowinger, uh, my associate minister, he was talking about the money that we put into disability services, and I could just hear on my left here someone going, it's not enough. And then Barbara Stewart, New Zealand First, she actually had some very good common sense ideas actually in her speech rare outbreak of uh, common sense from over that side, but um, she also was saying the money will never be enough. Well, the fact is, no one's ever going to say stop sending dollars into health, but we've got to focus on results. Uh, Kevin Haig, um, he said uh, something about, well, Tony Ryle, uh, all he ever focused on when he assessed a decision, Tony would say, does it lose me votes or does it win me votes? Well, I think actually that would be a great thing for the Greens to start trying themselves because actually, in the end, they are in politics. But look, the wider context is this government, as expressed through these estimates, is providing the uh, resources to fund the services that New Zealanders need in health. And the opposition here, they could not name one service that is not better under a national government. So everything has improved. The funding for everything's improved. The results for everything has improved. But the wider context also is now we are taking the social investment approach. So we're not just doing things in isolation. Uh, we've got health working in conjunction with housing, uh, looking at the effects of what we do in health in terms of the flow of people through the education system and what that means ultimately in terms of social outcomes, especially for some of our most vulnerable people uh, when they are coming through into adulthood. So the New Zealand health system, when you look at it internationally, is performing exceedingly well. Under this government, we've maintained uh, vote health at 6.5% of GDP. It's actually higher than the average less than 6% of GDP that there was under the Labor government. They were saying there's $1.7 billion cut for the health budget. Completely untrue. The health budget over time has gone up by over $4 billion. But the key thing is it's producing better and better results. An extra 50,000 operations, an extra 110,000 appointments per year, and an extra 6,000 plus doctors and nurses in the system. And meanwhile, while we are focusing resources on not only our most vulnerable populations, but those DHBs which have had unique challenges. So if you look in Canterbury, we are in the middle of a $1 billion hospital building program, the biggest ever in New Zealand. So Burwood Hospital's opened, and you will have seen those fantastic television uh, pictures of very happy patients. Uh, the acute services building, you know, that's going up. The outpatients clinic signed the contract, announced the tenderer for that last Friday. We're doing Akaroa. We've done uh, that centre in North Canterbury. And, you know, next on the block, we've got West Coast. Actually, it was going to be $68 million. We've bumped that up to $77 million. You're going to have a, uh, a hospital there that is state-of-the-art. It's going to be connected via telehealth to Christchurch, a fantastic resource for people on the West Coast. And next off the block, it's going to be Southern. So Dunedin Hospital, we're going through the Treasury process. Yesterday we announced $11 million for the new intensive care unit. There's good engagement between the commissioners and the doctors and the DHB there to really get those services that people in the South need. And it's great the contribution that Jackie Dean and other Southern MPs have made 
to getting that all working well. So look, a great set of estimates, a great injection of funding, but above all, a great set of health results for New Zealand. Members, the 